gonna get there. We ain't got no car.
This is in honor of you. Oh, an okay. homage, as they say. In my religion in Judaism, like we don't cut babies' hairs till they're three because we say that hair is an antenna what? to God, to the higher world. So I was wondering if you like have it. Do you feel that? I don't know. Both of my sons had really long hair until they were like two or three. My, well, my oldest, my two oldest sons. My younger son, we cut his hair early because it's just, it was ridiculous. Well, do you feel like other than like this patent that you invented, this look that only you have, huh? do you pick up stuff? Do you pick up stuff like in the universe? You know, I'm like a, a super uh, electronic uh, atomic nuclear dynamo of energy that receives all the That's what it's about. Um, good feelings from the people and I disperse them throughout my soul and then I give it all back and then I'm then I'm nothing. I hear that and I think the hair has a lot to do with that. <laughs> You're receiving good feelings from the people and I disperse them throughout my soul and then I give it all back and then I'm then I'm nothing. I was in the music industry, that whole conversation about the gatekeeper drill, you know, the rituals, things people got to do, blood sacrifice thing. I, mean, I don't know if you got into all that, but could you kind of go there, being as though you were in the, I, village, I, in the music industry? I, I read about all of that. Like, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Christian, but I'm not really a Christian. Industry a long time. How was it in the music industry? That whole conversation about the gatekeeper drill, you know, the rituals, things people got to do, blood sacrifice thing. I, mean, I don't know if you got into all that, but could you kind of go there, being as though you were in the, I, I, in the music industry? I, I read about all of that. Like, I'm a, I'm a, I don't even say, I don't even say my truth. And you would think that with the height of success that I had and the things I was able to do, the amount of records I sold, and actually the amount of, um, I don't want to say political power, but the amount of social power that I, that I was able to achieve, you would think that I would be a prime candidate for this, for this, just to be, so we can say, you could call it something for to be a member of the Illuminati or a member of the elite society or whatever. You would think that I would be that they would come at me, and I, I think they did. It's sideways, though. I never, no, I never got to meet directly and said, "We want you to join us, and we're doing this." That's never happened. But I will tell you, I've had motherfuckers come at me on some weirdo shit, like on some gay shit. I've had motherfuckers come at me on some, oh, you should do this type shit. And I was like, wow, what? Baby, what the, why the fuck would I do that? <laughs> I make no sense. I, I, I view that as being um, inhuman. I view that as, I, I would never do that. So, and then, right when the, um, there was some things that I was trying to do, that I felt were important, things that I, that I felt were to other people. Shit started happening to me. Went to jail, put some bullshit, got convicted. Well, not necessarily convicted, but, cause I didn't pay no time, no real time, but little shit started happening, you know? And I never, I didn't even address this shit, really. Because, who the fuck? When you know, and when you're a celebrity, bro, when something happens, whether it's true or it's not true, once it's been said, mm -hmm. for most people it's true. Because people don't, people don't do research to find out if something is true about a person or not. Whatever they hear, they deem it to be true. It's a new segment that I'm going to do every day that I'm going to call. I'm cool on that. And I'm going to tell you what I'm cool on today. What I'm cool on today is when something is obviously wrong or you obviously, something, something, you see something going on and then somebody brings it to your attention, right? And then you sit there and argue them down 
about how it's not true. Cool on that. For real. Because, you know, some things are, some things are, are, are make-believe. Some things are fictional. Some things are, are fake. And some things we don't know about. But if something is obvious, whether you've done the research or not, if something is obvious, then why would you argue about it? Okay? Then I can go ahead and on, go on and drink your Andrew Crow. I'm cool on that. Shock us all the way. When you when you in this industry, when you get to a certain point where you where people listen to what you have to say, you it gives you a certain amount of power. And you know, with the, along with that power, they you know, they feel like they say with power comes responsibility. Well, your responsibility is to what you believe in. You know what I'm saying? Your responsibility is not to, you're not responsible to, to 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 push anybody else's agenda. You pop, you're responsible to push your agenda and what you believe in and what you want to teach people. And you know that's a prerogative. But but if if you go against basically if you go against the government, you know what I'm saying? Um, they they try to shut you down, and that's that's um. You know, um, I believe wholeheartedly in the idea of the United States. Me too. You know, I believe wholeheartedly in the land of the free, home of the brave. But because I believe in, in, in what the Constitution, what the, what the Constitution um, is, is about, or supposed is based on, I do not believe in the way our, the way my government runs shit. I don't believe in politics and politicians and. And the way they do things because they're full of shit. They're liars. They, they, they're liars, and, and it's, it's been proven that they lied. Listen, they've lied about. They've lied about who we are since the beginning. Since the beginning of this country, do you know that America has been at war for 250 of, 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 of all the years of its existence, which is 250 odd years or so. America has been at war for 230 some of those years. Coolio featuring Gangsters Paradise. surprised by this one because I, I really didn't think I had much of a chance for that, you know, because really, um, California Love and, and Crossroads were two really good videos, and so was doing it, you know what I'm saying? And, um, I'm sharing this with all my homies because all those was the best videos of the year. We should all got our award tonight. Peace. Mourning the loss of one of the biggest names in hip hop, Coolio died today at the age of 59. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize it's not death. One of the biggest songs of any genre of the 1990s, Coolio's Gangsta's Paradise, the number one hit from 1995. The song was featured in the soundtrack of the movie Dangerous Minds. Film star Michelle Pfeiffer issuing this statement, heartbroken to hear of the passing of the gifted artist Coolio, a life cut entirely too short. He won a Grammy for his brilliant song on the soundtrack, which I think was the reason our film saw so much
much success. I remember him being nothing but gracious. 30 years later, I still get chills when I hear the song, sending love and light to his family. Born artist Leon Ivey Jr. in 1963, his family moved from Pennsylvania to Compton. He started rapping at the age of 15 and knew by 18 it would be his career. His 1994 debut album, It Takes a Thief, made him famous. His 1995 single, Gangsta's Paradise, made him a superstar. Along with his Grammy win, Coolio earned six nominations. He had a varied career as an actor, voiceover artist, and producer. Despite occasional brushes with the law, Coolio was well-liked in the entertainment industry, and his hairstyle became part of his trademark. Coolio, when you have a hat like that, is that something you alter yourself? That you cut the little nibs out of the sides, or what? It depends on the day. Coolio was at a friend's home in the Jefferson Park area of Los Angeles. Paramedics responded to a report of a medical emergency at around 4 p.m. They found the rapper unconscious. So they attempted to provide some medical uh, assistance to him, but he did not survive. And no foul play. At this time, we don't show any indications uh, that anything's associated with any criminal activity. Social media erupted with messages of shock, sadness, and appreciation. Ice Cube tweeting, I witnessed firsthand this man's grind to the top of the industry. Rest in peace, Coolio. Snoop Dogg tweeting simply, Gangsta's Paradise, R.I.P. Coolio. Coolio sold some 4.8 million albums over his career and just months ago celebrated his one billion stream of Gangsta's Paradise on YouTube. Yo, what's up, y'all? Just in one billion, I want to thank everybody for all the years of love and, and, and just, you know, being there for me, you know what I'm saying? Hope I got you through some good times and got you through some bad times. Cause the damn show got me through some... He was once a volunteer firefighter and worked for a time as a security guard at LAX before his music career took off. Artist Leon Ivey, Coolio, was 59 years old. He's survived by former wife, radio personality, Josefa Salinas, and six children. Because of death, her Grammy-winning rapper Coolio, the 59-year-old was found unresponsive at a friend's Los Angeles home last September. The rapper's family was informed today he died from a fentanyl overdose. His manager says Coolio also had traces of heroin and meth in his system. Coolio, whose real name is artist Leon Ivey Jr., was so known for that 1995 single Gangsta's Paradise. His 1994 debut album titled It Takes a Thief also scored a top 10 hit with the single Lakeside. The rapper's children plan to honor their father in a future documentary and film projects. His manager has spoken out after the death of the Gangsta's Paradise star. There were claims the 59-year-old rapper died from a drug overdose, but Coolio's manager told the Daily Mail the rap artist had died from a suspected heart attack while on a trip to Los Angeles to fix his passport ahead of shows scheduled in Germany. Friends say he avoided drugs and alcohol. In fact, one told media he'd usually just have a glass of water. This comes as fans speculate the rapper died from an overdose due to crack cocaine addiction. The rapper, known around the globe for his 90s hits, of course, Gangsta's Paradise, his widely successful one, died while visiting a friend in LA just last week. Now, no drugs were found at the scene and the official cause of death is yet to be revealed. Now, no drugs were found at the scene and the official cause of death is yet to be revealed.
the original Native Americans. We are the copper colored indigenous Niji from Turtle Island. That's who we truly are. When the Europeans came here to the North American continent, we were already here. Facts. The whole thing about out of about us being from Africa, out of Africa is a theory created by eugenics. Bitch. I, I, we are not fucking African. We are not. I've heard this. We have no real ties to Africa. Now, what about the island people? You think the people from the islands maybe be some of them maybe from Africa? Listen, they they this 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 I'm talking about this continent. This got really populated from from the from the fucking shores of Connecticut and Maine all the way to all the way to fucking California, Texas. Everywhere, the Gulf of Mexico, we, this country was fully populated. Every part of that's a fact. And the Europeans came here and created this narrative. And we, our, our history was told to us on reverse. It's true. So, with that being said, one of the worst things we ever did was start to call ourselves African Americans. I agree. Because once we did that. Once we did that, we completely took away our rights to this land. This is our fucking shit. This is our land. Our land. This is our land. Death of rapper Coolio. We're learning more about how he lived in his final days and how he died from one of his closest loved ones. Tonight, right here, only on Nine, his girlfriend is opening up about his loss. She's telling us what mattered most to the well-known musician. She spoke to KKL 9's Lauren Posen, who was live in downtown L.A., with this story. Lauren? Well, Pat, you know, to the world, Coolio was known as a Grammy Award winning rapper. But at home, he was the ultimate family man. His longtime girlfriend tells me he always put family first and then career. And she says up until his death, his life was perfectly balanced. He was doing exactly what he loved doing. She's been with Coolio for nearly a decade. Now, Mimi Ivy is mourning his death. She says their connection was once in a lifetime. I was his best friend and he trusted me. Ivy says he was in Los Angeles for a family visit that called her early Wednesday morning about his birth certificate. She says he forgot it and needed it to get a new passport for upcoming overseas engagements. He's like, I love you. He's like, I'm gonna call you back. Make sure you answer your phone. Don't turn your ringer off. And I was like, okay, I'll answer the phone. He's like, okay, I'm gonna call you back. Love you, bye. And that was it. Coolio died later that day at age 59. TMZ says from a heart attack, but his official cause of death hasn't been released yet. LAPD says there was no foul play. Ivy says she wasn't there, so she can't say, but does say he showed no signs of slowing down leading up to his death. The whole quarantine we spent, you know, he all he talked about was like, man, I can't wait to get back on the road. I'm an educated man. Coolio's music career spanned nearly three decades. He was one of hip-hop's biggest names in the 1990s and a Grammy Award-winning artist. But there was another side to him you might not know about. Probably one of the most intelligent people I have ever encountered in my life. Why he was never on Jeopardy, I don't know. He loved to read. Boy, was he, he's a storyteller. Ivy is calling on everyone who loved Coolio to keep him alive in their hearts. judge or you too will be judged for in the same way you judge others 
you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. That's Matthew uh, 7, chapter, verse 1 and 2. And here's 7, verse 3 through 5. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. You heathen. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not judge. This is, this is Luke. This is Luke. 637. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will you will be forgiven. That's why my brother get, you know, with his consciousness back, you know. Yeah, 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 too young, you know, right? Anytime, yeah. Come on, back. No, but. Probably get you, get you. Get it right, man. Good. Come on, back, bro.